Welcome to Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and SkilledWorker.com. Today we're going to be discussing a question that we get asked all very, very often actually. So it's, are newcomers required to live in the province to which they show intention to relocate to? So we're going to go into detail on our website. You can always find it in the news section. But today, we're just going to briefly touch on the subject. So Colin, what is the answer to this question? Complex question. And really, the main response is that Canada has 14 different jurisdictions. Immigration is shared between the federal government and each of the provinces and three territories. And there are agreements with each of the provinces and the federal government regarding immigration. So the provinces have a right to select immigrants. The federal government ensures that immigrants uh, meet the criteria, help, security. And all of this is uh, formulated in our Canadian Constitution. The first province that had this uh, right to legislate in immigration was Quebec. And in 1981, uh, it was the first province that signed an agreement. And all of this stems from uh, the Canadian Charter, uh, which is a series of enactments that date back to 1867. Uh, and over the years, uh, there were many amendments made. Uh, and in 1982, there was a formal a document called the Canadian Charter. Uh, but loosely, it refers to uh, the constitutional documents that define the rights of the provinces uh, and it governs the laws that provinces make. It governs the rights of citizens in Canada in relation to the laws that governments make. So it's this very important uh, legislative uh, enactment that governs all of the laws that come into force in Canada with respect to how the different actors must play. Now, uh, particularly with immigration, uh, there is a section in our charter, which is section six, and that refers to the freedom of mobility. And the uh, section six uh, refers to the right for an individual, uh, particularly uh, Canadian permanent residents, as well as citizens, the right to uh, pursue the gaining of a livelihood in any province, the, the right to move in, take up residence, and work in any province. So in terms of mobility, uh, it's important that individuals understand your rights to live anywhere in Canada do not officially begin until you become a Canadian permanent resident. So, so how? Do, so that brings us to our next question. So, how do uh, I mean? How do mobility rights apply to immigration? It's important that you become a Canadian permanent resident. It, it formally, you uh, apply to uh, become uh, an immigrant in a particular province. You go through the process. You get selected, and then the federal government uh, conducts its security and medical. Uh, and then when you actually come to the port of entry, that is the point where you need to be sure that your intended destination is going to reflect all of your actions. If you're not planning to live in a particular province and you are clearly intending to go to another province, that becomes an obstacle for you to become a Canadian permanent resident. You can't suggest that you have certain rights until your residence is formally activated. So when you appear at a port of entry, it's the responsibility of the examining agent to ensure that you're admissible to Canada because uh, in the immigration rules, the uh, individual who says, I want to live in a particular province, you then become a provincial nominee. And the provincial nominee means that you're intending to live in that particular province. So if you are going through a whole story or a charade that you don't intend to live in a particular province, then the examining officer will be in a position to uh, have many different recourses. They surely can prevent you from becoming a permanent resident and they can report you. Uh, they can uh, admit you only as a visitor if they choose. There's a lot of options 
And at the very worst, if it becomes very clear that you have fabricated a whole storyline that you want to go to a particular province, but you clearly have worked up a whole charade, you could be cited for misrepresentation. So it's very important that you understand the obligations of uh, the charter rights that you have, the obligations that you have in the Immigration Act to be truthful, and that you're going to put together all of your actions that show you want to live in a particular province. Okay. So then, how are provinces used as a backdoor to Canada? This is very commonly done. Uh, it's commonly done where an individual uh, can't meet the general federal skilled worker rules. So the federal program is the largest program. It brings in to its particular program. It admits the vast majority of immigrants to Canada. For many immigrants who are going to qualify under the federal express entry system, for example, as a federal skilled worker, the vast majority of them are destined to say Ontario. Uh, they qualify. There's no problem with those individuals because they're up front and they intend to go to Ontario, which is the largest province, which has the biggest volume of immigrants to Canada. Where it becomes problematic is where an individual doesn't qualify under the federal system and they are using another province because they are fitting the criteria for that province. They've submitted an application to that province they are now appearing at a port of entry and ultimately they have become aware of all the requirements and they are able to navigate and get admitted as an immigrant to Canada suggesting they want to live in a province they've put all of their cards properly in order and they will be admitted and then once they're admitted to Canada it's very difficult for Canadian authorities to challenge that individual uh, for uh, irregularities in where they wanted to live. Uh, the biggest problem, uh, of course, uh, is where an individual, such as one going to Quebec. For example, Quebec has the largest uh, number of immigrants under its own program. It brings in 50,000 immigrants a year. Overall, Canada uh, admits 300,000. So there's a lot what we call retention rates. Uh, there's a lot of immigrants who come in through the Quebec program but don't ultimately settle in that province. This is a big problem for Quebec, for many of the maritime provinces who have their own programs. Manitoba, uh, there are Saskatchewan, the smaller provinces. This, is being a, a, this has been a problem for many, many years. And immigrants who are aware of all of these requirements are able to suggest they want to live in a province and unfortunately there's nothing that can come in between an immigrant's right to freely live and work anywhere in Canada uh, and their, uh, the, the wish for a province to retain and, and select and retain a, an immigrant. So it's up to the provinces to create the right conditions. We've written about this many times. It's important that the provinces create the right conditions that will uh, result in an immigrant and family wanting to stay in that province. Okay. This is the, the biggest dilemma that immigration policymakers have. It's to not force people to live in a particular area, but create willingly the conditions that an, an immigrant will willingly want to reside and remain in that province. Okay. Aside from that, it's very difficult for policymakers to force people if an immigrant has properly navigated all the channels and they are respecting their obligations under the Immigration Act. Okay, so can a candidate apply directly to a provincial nominee program? So this is a question we often get uh, asked. Uh, how do I choose a province that is favorable to my background? Uh, first, you have to know that within the 10 provinces and three territories, uh, they all have their own programs, but uh, some of them uh, participate in the Federal Express Entry System. Some of the provinces have their own occupation demand list programs. Those programs open and close very quickly, often without notice. Uh, all of the provinces and territories have programs for immigration 
where you, uh, if you have a sponsoring employer, you have a direct pathway to immigration. So you cannot access a provincial program unless you are either going in under the express entry system and that province has issued you a nomination or you're going into a province uh, and you've applied successfully through one of the occupation demand lists or third you are working in the province you found a sponsoring employer that employer has has sponsored your application you will almost certainly have a direct pathway to permanent immigration those are the only ways so for people who come to us and say I want to apply to a province we know uh, it becomes very difficult for us to say okay we'll apply to you for you to that province it's very difficult unless you have a sponsoring employer with a sponsoring employer that is the gold standard for anyone to access a any provincial program just about okay so then why must a candidate show that they have intent to settle in a province because the the intention is always one of the criteria that is used in the programs in the provincial programs that is an underlying requirement it's it's in every single document for a particular province whether it's Quebec whether it's Manitoba whether it's a provincial program in the Maritimes you will see often almost without without exception you will have a criterion which refers to you have to have an intention to live in that province. So the mere fact that you are accessing that program, if it comes to be that you never really had that intention and you were just using that program to access Canada because you couldn't qualify under any other program, that brings into question your integrity, your honesty, your truthfulness, and ultimately it points to misrepresentation. If you are caught uh, using the immigration rules in that fashion, you can be excluded from Canada for up to five years. Uh, so it's very important that uh, individuals have an intention to live in a province. They continue to have that intention when they appear at a port of entry. After you have cleared the channels, all of the formalities, after you have been admitted to Canada as a permanent resident, then you are free to exercise your rights that are in the Charter, your Charter rights uh, under Section 6, to move and relocate anywhere you want in Canada. Okay. So that pretty much is the, the gist and the framework of individuals who are looking to come to Canada within the uh, obligations that everyone must respect and within the competing factors that the provinces have in trying to recruit immigrants to their province. Okay, great. So, uh, but the job is clearly the golden standard. Yes, and I mean that's something we do assist with. So let's explain to candidates what we can do to help you find that gold standard that will allow you to live in any province regardless of the rules in place, regardless of the selection criteria that could change it's having a sponsoring employer. Let's, let's explain what we do for individuals. Okay, so through skilledworker.com, which is a leader in foreign recruitment, uh, we provide a Canadian style resume, cover letter, database of potential hiring employers. So our clients will choose the provinces as well as the industries that they want us to include. Uh, so we'll provide them with a database of employers they can contact. Obviously other tools and, and tips on how to find a job, but most importantly, we just have a new feature now. We provide our clients with a one hour face-to-face -face LinkedIn tutorial with a licensed recruiter here in our office. So this will be done through video conferencing. And uh, our, one of our recruiters is going to be showing our clients how to identify jobs, hiring managers, create job alerts, as well as uh, identify geographic areas where there's actually a need for a job like theirs. And this is really important if you're coming from overseas. Uh, if you have an inclination, if you're willing to relocate to some of the outlying areas of Canada, unemployment rates in Canada are at almost historic lows. Uh, so with unemployment rates in nationally uh, in the uh, 5.8 range, uh, you have that means you have some of the uh, geographic outlying areas of Canada have unemployment rates that are below 3%. So it's very 
uh, logical that if you're looking to have an employer sponsor you and if you're looking to relocate to Canada through uh, a, an employment-based application, having a knowledge of what areas of the country uh, outside of Toronto, outside of Montreal, Calgary, Vancouver, uh, you have much better chances of succeeding in your relocation projects. So part of our tutorial that we give on LinkedIn, our live face-to-face 60-minute -face tutorial, as you mentioned correctly, it's, it's showing individuals what areas of the country would be very strategic for you to consider applying. And that's really, uh, hopefully, uh, as we just launched our, our program this month, uh, we're going to be able to share with you uh, where you should strategically look for finding a job to support your application. Great. So what about employers, Colin? How do we assist employers recruit and retain workers? So again, through skilledworker.com, uh, we are in a position to put together uh, mandates that will help employers find international talent. So obviously, this is for employers who have been running advertisements. Uh, they're not clearly not able to locate uh, talent uh, in the local labor market. Canada's policies allow working uh, individuals to come into Canada, employers to sponsor foreign workers uh, under many different programs. For example, we currently represent uh, companies in the technology industry. Uh, the technology industry is one area uh, that is really suited uh, for bringing in foreign workers under the global talent stream, for example. Uh, so working with employers, we will put together a mandate which is going to comprise of, first and foremost, a recruitment component. We will work under fixed fees. Typically, employers will pay uh, for uh, upper level uh, skilled working talent 20% uh, of an annual salary. What we can do uh, in our uh, projects that we put together, we work on fixed fees that will actually cost considerably less uh, than the 20%. It's going to be significantly less. Bringing in a foreign worker will put together a project that will target candidates from a particular area of the world. And then once we've shortlisted the individuals that an employer might uh, be interested in, we'll handle the immigration side of things, all part of a mandate in which our fees are fixed fees, and they, in total, will come in considerably less than 20%. I'm, I'm confident to say there's very uh, w interesting opportunities for employers in a wide range of industries, whether it's technology, uh, whether it's the, uh, the uh, tourist industry, the accommodations, uh, the healthcare, uh, in the skilled trades particularly, uh, there are a number of uh, employers who are facing uh, strategic challenges in finding, in finding talent. We can use the international market. Canadian government promotes policies, and we are in a position to help you in navigating these challenges. Okay. So, as always, I mean, if one is interested in coming to Canada, please go to our website, immigration.ca, and complete our free online evaluation form. We'll then get back to you with your options. And employers, uh, please go to the Contact Us section. We'd love to hear from you and discuss on how we could assist. Uh, also, please follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, and, please, you know, we love, we love hearing from you. So, uh, and the next live stream should be... Pretty, yep, we're going to have one surely uh, as, as the new month is starting uh, in a few days. We'll surely have our next topic in July. Uh, so until then, uh, we look forward to seeing you. Well, thanks. Thanks thank for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. See you soon. Thank See you. you. Thanks.